motel. The yeah. Motel there. But. Well, the motel uh, is the Capri. I call it the crappy. Basically, that's all that supports the thing, I think. Toads. It just struck me as funny that they were that close together. I never noticed it before. creating hardened, violent criminals, whereas you didn't have that before. But there are some people who would say that our political system is like that because it creates fear in the general populace, and through fear you can control the general populace much easier. So let's create these factories where we can turn out violent criminals. things being talked about these days that I thought were only in my mind, you know, that I maybe read it somewhere on some crackpot site or whatever, and I'm thinking, that must be some sort of crazy conspiracy nut, because I'm only seeing this in one place. You know, like this whole stuff with the assassination attempt on the sen uh, the, the, the repin. No. Arizona, and it's like, you know, in 2008 when um, Obama was running against McCain, I felt like there was too much very heated rhetoric going on, and heated, I mean, people talking about they don't want to be a part of this country anymore, you were or they're going to gonna shoot royal Liquor sign there? I have a couple okay. times. Not very good. Okay. Uh, are, are they going to shoot or bring to the violence? You know, carry guns to the rallies. Carry guns to rallies. You know, threatening people. Anything that Obama has stood for has been like, um, we're going to oppose. Just because he's for it. Even though we were for it six months ago, or a year ago, or whatever. Yeah, and um, 
I would. And I'm not even. I'm not even going to be nice. I'm not even say, well, there's hateful rhetoric on the left. No, not to the degree that it's come. Not to the degree of vitriol that's come from the right. People can apologize and argue all they want, and really, they are apologizing. They're they're rationalizing and being apologists for the bad behavior on the right wing, and it is the right wing that has been teetering this country into civil war. Uh, and I'm going to say those that word, those words, civil war, because that's what it's about. When Palin got up as a vice presidential candidate and started saying some of the things she said, it smacked of extreme intolerance, inability to um, even try to grasp what's on a majority of Americans' minds. Uh, it's just presenting opinions as if they are facts. And, you know, my definition of that, when somebody, especially somebody who's in some form of power or authority, expresses an opinion like it's an already accepted fact, that is called propaganda. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even going to be nice about it. I'm just going to say it outright. It's the right wing doing this stuff. It's whack jobs on the right wing. That's not an ad hominem attack. You want to go through the facts? They're there. Everybody's been seeing them. I wonder if this guy had a legal weapon. I haven't heard that yet. Did he have had it, bought it legally in a gun store? Did he steal it? Did he? Uh, was it unregistered? Or did he have a concealed carry permit or what? Well be interesting to find out. All you, all you really have to do to get uh, deadly weapons in this country, and I'm not just talking about guns, I'm talking about anything, is just have money. Yeah, but... And um, the... there's no consideration put towards a mental state of a person. Mm -hmm. I mean... Um, but they were always saying, oh, if everybody has this concealed carry, the crime, crime rate will go down. And, well, That's not true. It, it, um, you'll have more random shootings, and mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. If you're selling guns, or not just guns, weapons of any kind, I don't care if it's a an axe that's not even supposed to be used as a weapon, or a chainsaw, or whatever, a knife, a gun, anything, you're selling these kind of things to people who are uh, mentally unstable, you can tell it. but. Convince these people who are running gun shops or who sell martial art knives. You can just sell that guy? He's crazy. He's got money. That's all I care about. And that's where I think the responsibility does need to be put back onto them. Why did you sell something to somebody that everybody is looking at like, oh my God, this guy is crazy? And people say, well, he, he wasn't. He, he wasn't going to be, he wasn't going to harm anyone. He did, he's harmless. How do you know that? Are you a psychologist? I always say I mean, that people can generally tell crazy. When they're given these tests for concealed carry, I think they ought to have an IQ test or psychological test and so forth. More than can I hit the target. I think... I think there really is a common sense test. Now, granted, you can sell to somebody who's perfectly lucid and he'll turn around and and do a mass killing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. But then you have these people who you're like, what are you even doing in this store? You know? Yeah, and you get the people that you talk to and they're the John Wayne types. And, <laughs> hey, I'm... Most blow them, the bastard away. And most of them are, are more talk than walk yeah. and pretty damn harmless. But you know, the the guy the, the guy who walks into your I can give a uh, a good litmus test. The guy who walks into your store and you're selling camping gear, which includes knives, you're selling guns, you're selling chainsaws, you're selling axes. The guy who walks in your store, you feel like you got to follow him around. Maybe that should tell you that you shouldn't be selling him anything. That may be dangerous. 
but that's almost the same test you give for uh, somebody running a liquor store. Hey, he's he's so, sober enough. I could sell him a couple more drinks. Yeah. And uh, or a bar. Yeah. And I, you know, I mean, I don't care if people think I'm a prude, uncool, or whatever. But you know, a bar. If you're selling somebody who's already completely intoxicated and giving them more drinks, mm. you know, you need to stop. And, and really, I believe that um, at the entrance to the bar, or at the bar itself, there should be a key hook mm -hmm. and a breathalyzer. Bartender, I need a drink. Okay, sir, let me have your car keys. All right, bartender. And then like an hour later, bartender, I'm I'm ready to leave now, all right? Who's your driver? I'm the driver. All right, here's the breathalyzer test. I can't give you car keys back. I can call you a cab. You can come pick your keys up tomorrow. Or, you know. You can call somebody to come get you. you can call somebody to come get you. That would cut into our profits. Oh, we're not babysitters. These people are adults. No, 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 no. Well, you know what? I don't think you should be in business then. You're not a responsible business owner, you know? What's the pigs doing here? Yeah, I don't know. Alternative route starting Monday. We got, looks like a bus has been pulled over or something. No, in the Kansas City buses, it probably shot craps. <laughs> no, no, they seem to be pretty good buses. Deep, keep. Hard work, try the lights. Fifty one X. Maybe it was an accident because I see cars in front that have got blinking lights too. Mm. 